Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis by mailing a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers. The original air date, December the 23rd, 1951, and the title is The Christmas Payoff. of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Music means all things to all people. Music is relaxation, adventure, Elysian fields of dreams come true. And at this joyous holiday time, music is Christmas. We of NBC feel proud of our Monday evening lineup of truly fine music programs. Tomorrow means more fine music on NBC with the Railroad Hour featuring Gordon McRae and Lucille Norman in The Happy Prince, a special Christmas Eve production to add to your listening pleasure. Also tomorrow, there's The Voice of Firestone with guest Eleanor Stieber. Later, there's The Telephone Hour with guest soloist Blanche Thiebaum. And tomorrow, enjoy the Christmas program of The Mario Lanza Show with Mario Lanza, lovely Giselle McKenzie, and Ray Sinatra's orchestra. Yes, Monday is your invitation to music over most NBC stations. Make a program note to hear the Railroad Hour, the Voice of Firestone, the Telephone Hour, and the Mario Lanza Show tomorrow. Monday means music on NBC. Hear it on this station. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Christmas Payoff. It is 4 p.m. on the afternoon of December 25th, 1940, in the small West Texas town of Rockfield. In his office, Dr. Edward Hartley and his nurse are just clearing up after treating an emergency case, which has taken the doctor away from his family on this Christmas day. Doctor, before I leave, would you like me to stay? Alice, I would just like you to scoot on home where you should have been hours ago. And what about you? I think it's a shame. The one day in the year family should be together and you have an emergency. Well, anyway, old Mrs. Thompson will feel a lot better now for the holidays. Pretty nasty infection. Mm-hmm. Yes, doctoring's the one business can't be run by a time clock. And nursing's a part of doctoring, so I leave when you do. <laughs> Trapped. Sure would have loved to spend the whole day with the youngsters, though. No, they probably won't even let you back in the house. Well, Christmas got them so excited, I don't think they even know I'm gone. Oh, by the way, you sure you won't have supper with us? I'd love to, Doctor, but... Oh, no. Huh? What's the matter? Doctor, you come over the window for a minute. Not another patient. I think so. Uh Well, guess the Christmas tree can wait a little longer. Who is it? I don't know. Here, look. That man just getting off the car. I don't recognize him. That arm must be in pretty bad shape. Bandage clear to the elbow. And why didn't he come in two hours ago? Hmm? What do you mean? That man was sitting in that car two hours ago. Only he was parked in front of the house next door. I wonder... Come away from there. What, Doctor, what... I don't want him to see you. Now, go on. What else? 
Well, just an hour later, when I took Mrs. Thompson out to her car, he was still there. And he meant it. He really meant it. Doctor, what is it? Alice, now listen to me. Don't ask you any questions. I want you to get in the supply closet and stay there. What? Whatever you do, don't make a sound. No matter what happens out here, don't give yourself away. You understand me? Your life depends on it. What is it? Why don't we call the sheriff? I'm going to. Hurry, hurry into the closet. Now remember, not a sound. I should have known it had come. I didn't know when. Come on, come on. Operator, this is Doc Hartley. Listen carefully. I have to speak quietly. Get the sheriff to my office as quick as you can, and don't call back. Just get him out here. He can't stall any longer. Come in. Just a minute. Here he goes. Yes? You, Doc Hartley? That's right. Well, can I come in? Oh, of course. Come in. Uh, no, that, that's the supply closet. My dispensary is this way. Mm-hmm. Now, if you'll just get up on the table. Uh, would you like to lie down? More comfortable for that arm. I'll sit. That's a lot of bandaging. What did you do to that hand? I think maybe I sprained it. You're the doc. Suppose you tell me. Hmm. You always work this slow, doc? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Where's your nurse? She's gone home a long time ago. Not even supposed to be working today. This is Christmas, you know? Yeah, I know. Why don't you pull the last of the bandage off, Doc? Don't you want to see my hand? I know what's in it. Then I'll do it myself. Yeah. See? There's your Christmas present, Doc, in my fist. Nice 38. Don't you want it, Doc? Why are you doing this? Why... Maybe I shouldn't give it to you. You guessed what it was. Spoiled my surprise. Nah, you look like a nice guy. I'll give it to you anyway. Look at me, Doc. You know what it's for. You get your... Merry Christmas, Doc. Sheriff Lon McGill, on arriving at the scene of the crime, found Dr. Hartley dead and Nurse Alice Leonard in a state of physical collapse. He immediately asked for the help of the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned, joining the sheriff at the doctor's office a short while later. The photographer will be out of your way in a minute, Jace. The nurse I told you about is in the other room. Maybe you want to talk to her first. Yeah, thanks, Sheriff. She's still as bad off as she was? Oh, she's some better now. It's a rough thing for a woman to have to go through. Yeah, plenty rough. In here, Jason. Alice. Alice, this is Ranger Pearson. Alice Leonard, Jace. Been Doc Hartley's nurse for six years. Howdy, ma'am. I'm sorry. I just can't seem to get a hold of myself. But it was so horrible. (laughs) <laughs> I know how you must feel, ma'am, but you'll be helping a lot by answering a few questions. I had tried. Fine. Sheriff here has given me what you told him, so I won't put you through that again. Just want to clear up a few things. You know of anyone who might have wanted Doc dead? Oh, what sort of person would want that? Doctor was a wonderful man. Never had an enemy in his life. Sheriff, he'll tell you that. That's right, Jace. Doc was a real popular man in this town. I never heard a word against him. Friend didn't put him where he is now, Sheriff. Ma'am, you say you saw the killer's face? Yes, through the keyhole. You think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? Yes, I'm sure I would. Good. Now, from their conversation, would you say the doctor knew this man? No. Yet when he saw him through the window, he made you hide in the closet. Yes, that's right. He say anything at all about the man? No. Wait. I remember now he said something about he meant it. He meant it? Yes. What is it, ma'am? I just remembered something, a note. What note, Alice? A few weeks ago, the doctor got a letter. I opened it because I take care of his mail. Go on. The inside was just a piece of paper with words cut out from newspapers, pasted to it. It said the payoff is soon. What did the doctor say when he saw it? Well, he just laughed, said it was some sort of joke. But I caught him sitting and staring at it a few times after that. You know where that letter is? Well, I think it's in his desk. 
Miss Leonard, do you remember anything about the car this man drove? No. Just that it was black, a sedan. Oh, and the front fender had a big dent in it. I remember I could see it from the office window. I think that'll do for now, ma'am. You go home and try and get some rest. Uh, tell the deputy I said to drive you home, Alice. I will. I hope you find the man that did this. I hope you find him. Yeah, oh, poor woman. She was mighty fond of the doc, Jason. Must have spent some bad minutes in that closet. Yeah, the doc had a couple of bad minutes, too, Sheriff. Uh, the photographer must be finished in there by now. Let's take a look. Nothing's been touched in there, Jace. Everything's just the way we found it. Thought you'd want it that way. Thanks, Sheriff. Let's have a look at the doc. Yeah, I'll just whip the sheet off him here. He shot at close range, all right. Powder burns. The angle of the shot seemed to bear out the nurse's story. Ballistics will fill us in later. Let's have a look at this desk. Okay, Jason. Well, there's not much on this side, Jace. What's the matter? A drawer full of Christmas candies. It'll be a nice Christmas for those poor kids. Hey, wait a minute, Jace. I think this is what you want. And that's it. The payoff is soon. No envelope with it? Mm, I reckon Doc threw that away. It'd be a tough one to trace. Cheap paper, the message in newspaper captions. And it's used a lot for blackmail because it's so hard to run down. Well, where to now, Jace? Has the Doc's wife been told about this yet? No. Been holding off. I sure don't relish it, none. Those kids and all... Let's tell her together then, Sheriff. It's a little easier that way. Thanks, Jase. Anything more we can do here? No, but before we go, I want to check on that black sedan with a smashed front fender. See if it's on the stolen car list. Sure thing. If you can spare a couple of deputies, Sheriff, I'd like them to do a house-to-house on this street. Maybe somebody else got a look at that car or the killer. It's a good idea, Jase. There's not much to go on, is there? There's enough. They always leave enough. This is one killer I want, Sheriff. I want him bad. A black sedan with a smashed front fender was on the stolen car list. We finished our calls and left. Fifteen minutes later, we stood in front of a large, neat house on a well-kept street. Staring at the front door, Doc Hartley would never open again. Through the parlor window, we could see three laughing kids and proud grandparents around a Christmas tree. It was a rough doorbell to ring. Darling, I thought you'd never... Oh, I'm sorry. I was expecting my husband. Oh, Sheriff McKill. Howdy, Miss Hartley. Can we come in? Oh, of course. Please do. I imagine you want to see Ed. I'm I'm sorry he had an emergency, but if you like, Mrs. I can... Mrs. Hartley, this is Ranger Pearson. Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> Hello, Ranger. Pleased to meet you. Ma'am, can we speak to you privately? I mean, in another room, away from them? Of course. Come in here. Well, what is it? Ma'am, it's best to say it quickly. Your husband, he's been killed. Oh, no. Here, you, you, you better sit down, Miss Hartley. Yeah. I'm sorry, ma'am. How, how did it happen? He was shot, ma'am, by a man who came in asking for treatment. I want to find that man, Mrs. Hartley. I... I know how you feel at a time like this, but if you could answer a few questions, it'd help. I'll try. Has anyone threatened your husband that you know of? Did he seem worried lately? No. Did anyone call him today beside the woman he went to treat? Just a man. What man? A little past noon, the phone rang. Some man asked for my husband. I told him he was at the office on an emergency, and he 
just hung up. You recognize the voice, Mrs. Hartley? No. Just one more question, ma'am. Do you know of anyone who had a grudge against the doctor who would have wanted this to happen? No. Nobody. Nobody except... Except who? Oh, I was thinking of that man, the the one he sent to prison. Sent to prison, ma'am? I think I can explain that, Jace. Uh, You mean that Nixon thing, Miss Hartley? Yes. Well, it happened a couple of years back, Jace. A fellow named Al Nixon robbed the payroll of a gas-cracking plant about 40 miles from here. Shot during the getaway, though. Came through here and forced Doc Hartley to treat him at gunpoint. You know what kind of stretch they gave him, Sheriff? No, I don't remember. You see, that was before I was sheriff. I was living at the other end of the county then. Well, anyway, seems Doc somehow sneaked a phone call while he was treating Nixon, and the police got him. Isn't that right, Miss Hartley? Yes. They sent him to Huntsville. Mrs. Hartley, I'm sorry to put you through this. We're going to leave now. Is there anything we can do for you? Nothing. There's nothing anyone can do. How will I tell the children? (laughs) Call from KTXA ought to be in any minute now, Sheriff. I still don't see why you ask him for that rundown on Nixon, Jace. You thinking maybe he's out? I don't know, Sheriff, but I sure want to find out. Nixon's got a real good motive for this killing. Well, I got to go with you on that. But... KTXA, hold it, Sheriff. Unit 10. That's KTXA it. KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead. I have information you requested. Al Nixon, sentenced life term, Huntsville Penitentiary, December 1937. Money from gas cracking plant payroll never recovered. 10 4, Unit 10 clear. KTXA, Austin. Well, that kind of kills that, don't it, Jason? man with the best motive of all is serving life at Huntsville. It's still too good to pass by, Sheriff. What do you mean? Look, Nixon may be in Huntsville for life, but that doesn't change his motive. It's still good. So good I want to see him. I'm going to Huntsville in the morning. In a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Who catches tuberculosis? The young? Yes, but so do the old. And so do people of any race or nationality. Half a million Americans are afflicted with TB. 40,000 a year die from it. Yet TB is preventable and curable. It can be controlled. How? One way is through Christmas seals. Christmas seals are the sole support of the 3,000 voluntary associations affiliated with the National Tuberculosis Association, which are fighting to wipe out TB in their communities. The greater the Christmas seal sale, the nearer we are to ending the scourge of tuberculosis. If you haven't already purchased your Christmas seals, you can still buy and use them. Be glad of this easy, inexpensive way to help others. Be grateful for the opportunity to help safeguard your own home against the dread white plague. And now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Christmas Payoff. Next morning, I left Nurse Alice Leonard with the sheriff to begin the long job of trying to pick a killer's picture out of the gallery. Then I headed for Huntsville. I wasn't in the visiting room five minutes when Nixon was brought in. A brutal-looking little man who shuffled forward and sat across the table from me, waiting for me to talk. My name's Pearson, Nixon. Ranger Pearson. Uh, What do you want, a medal for remembering your name? I want some answers. (laughs) And if I don't give them to you, you'll have me arrested, huh? (laughs) You remember Dr. Hartley, Nixon? Yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Look around. Ain't this good reason to remember him? He didn't put you here. You put yourself here. Hartley put me here. Oh, but don't you worry ahead about me, Ranger. I'll make out. Yeah. You worry about Hartley. Hartley's dead, Nixon. 
You mean that? He's dead. Shot to death. <laughs> Something funny, Nixon? <laughs> sure, sure. Don't you get it? He put me in here, now he's dead, but I'm still alive. <laughs> Ooh, you cops, you're all so smart, ain't you? Sure, sure, you got me, but you never got the money. And best of all, Hartley is dead. You're in the right place, Nixon. Uh, uh, so that's why you're here, huh? Maybe I killed him, huh? <laughs> sure, sure, I'll confess. I just walked through the walls, knocked him off, and flew back like a bird. <laughs> One call for you, Ranger. You can take it in the office. All right, guy. Thanks. Is there with Nixon? Yeah, you can have him. This way. Hey, Ranger, arrest me. I killed him. I killed him. In there, Ranger. Thanks. Hello? Sheriff McGill, Jace. How are you making out? Old trail, Sheriff. Nixon's no help. How'd you come out? Nurse picked out a picture, Jace. Swears it's him. A fella named Lou Crowder. You run a make on him? I sure did. He did the last two years in Huntsville. Released a week ago. Beginning to fit, Sheriff. Any more on that car? I was just coming to that. They found it about a hundred miles from here. Abandoned in some brush just outside of Crest City. I want to see that car, Sheriff. Tell him to hold it where it is. As soon as I talk to the warden, I'm heading for Crest City. Want to meet me there? Sure thing, Jace. Meet you at the hotel. Never can tell what's coming, Sheriff. That cold trail's all warmed up again. I had my talk with the warden and then met the sheriff in Crest City. As we headed for the spot where the abandoned car had been found, I kept thinking of Doc's wife and her three small kids. I was getting closer to a killer, and I liked it. Oh, I don't know, Jason. No matter how I figure it, there's always a couple of loose ends. Well, then try this, Sheriff. Al Nixon is doing life for a payroll robbery, and he's convinced it's Doc Hartley's fault. Now, that payroll was never found because Nixon hid it someplace before they got him. Yeah, I follow that far, Jace. In Huntsville with Nixon was Lou Crowder. Now, Nixon knew he wasn't ever going to get to use that money, so suppose he made a deal with Crowder. Crowder could have it if he killed Doc Hartley. But what was to stop Crowder from just digging up the money and not killing the Doc? Well, Nixon's too smart for that, Sheriff. Probably set it up so he'd let Crowder know where the money is after he was sure of Doc's death. Yeah. It figures all right. But how would he let Crowder know? By letter, Sheriff. The warden told me Nixon's already written Crowder three times. What good would that do? All mail coming out of Huntsville is censored, Jay. I know, but the two men had plenty of time to rig a code when they were together in the pen. Well, then a letter could be the answer. That's right. Yeah, the highway patrol car up ahead must be where the car is. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Howdy. Uh, howdy, fellas. It, there's a car, Jace, just behind this brush. Mm -hmm. Jace, even if your figuring's right, what do you reckon this car is going to tell us? Just one thing, Sheriff. And that's it. I don't get it, Jace. You will. Look, would Crowder want to hang around a town he'd killed a man in? No, reckon not. But if he's expecting a letter from Nixon... He's got a light someplace to get it. What are you driving at? Put this together. This car's still in running order. Crowder didn't have to leave it. That makes Crest City a pretty good bet for the place the letter's going to be picked up. But what if Crowder's already picked the letter up? Uh, it's not likely. Nixon didn't even know about the killing until I told him today. And he'd want to be sure before he paid off. What if Nixon double-crosses Crowder? Suppose he don't send the letter telling where the money is. He'll send it, Sheriff. I got a good look at Nixon's face when I told him Doc was dead. He'll send it. Back in Crest City, the postmaster agreed to notify us the minute he got any letter postmarked Huntsville without giving it out. The very next day, the letter was there. And a man had come in for it, but was told it hadn't arrived. The postmaster noticed the man was driving a car with a horse trailer attached. I got my horse trailer, and we set the trap in the post office the next morning. Well, that's Crowder, all right, Jason. He got the letter. Shall we take him? No. Hold it, Sheriff. 
What's the matter? I don't want to take a chance. He's probably armed. Some of these people may get hurt. Well, what are you going to do? Give him a lead and tail him. All right, let's move up the front door and see where he goes. I've been expecting a catalog if you want. Well, the only thing is, he just got in that car, Jason. Yeah. The one with the trailer. He's pulling out. Come on. You reckon he'll head straight for that money? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He's not pulling that horse trailer for nothing. He must be heading someplace. He can't use a car. Yeah. It's all right with me. We'll get him, Sheriff. Wherever he goes, we'll get him. For almost three hours, we trailed Crowder by car, never getting too near him, just pinpointing him. When the country got rough, he left his car and switched to the horse he'd been pulling. So did we. We gave him a bigger lead and just followed his tracks. Awful rough climb, Jace. You sure were following him? I don't see any tracks. We're following him all right, Sheriff. Didn't you just see that turned rock moist on one side? A hoof did that. Beats me how you spot him. Hold it, Sheriff. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It's a drop-off just ahead. I want to look. See anything, Jay? Shh. Hold it. He's just over the drop, about 20 feet. Is he digging, Jace? Better than that, Sheriff. He's found it already. Now look, Sheriff. He's in a dead-end canyon. I'm going down after him. You cut along this ridge and close in from the base. All right, Jace, but be careful. Come on, boy. Crowder! Get your hands up. You'll never take me, copper! That's a warning, Crowder. Next one will be through your head. Now throw your gun away. All right. All right, don't shoot. You see, my hands are up. Keep them there. Look, Look Ranger. There's 30,000 bucks here. I'll make a deal with you. Take half the money. Just give me a chance. Like the chance you gave, Doc? You're not going to get that money. No, you don't. <laughs> give me that knife. <laughs> you all right, Jay? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right, Sheriff. You were taking an awful chance that way, Jay. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know it, Sheriff. I had a bad minute there when I saw his knife glint in the sun. Thought you'd have to gun him for sure. I didn't want it that way. I had to take Crowder alive, Sheriff. He's my Christmas present to the warden at Huntsville. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. With Christmas just around the corner, we at NBC hope that you all will have a joyful, happy holiday season. With the program scheduled on the NBC radio network, we will try to add to your listening pleasure as you relax and tune for your favorite entertainers. Special programs are planned by all of our NBC shows, and we know that you will want to hear as many of them as you possibly can. To put it in musical form, here is a holiday wish from the NBC chimes. Happy holiday, happy listening, happy holiday, happy listening, NBC wishes you a season of good cheer, a merry, merry Christmas and a happier new year. Happy holiday, happy listening, happy holiday, happy listening. Yes, from all of us at NBC to all of you throughout the country comes this sincere, hearty wish for a Merry Christmas. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. On February 3rd, 1941, Al Nixon was removed from Huntsville Penitentiary to stand trial along with Lou Crowder for the premeditated murder of Dr. Hartley. Both men were found guilty. The sentence, death in the electric chair. This is Joel McRae, folks. I just want to say I hope you'll all have a happy holiday season and many more to come. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. The cast.
cast included Tony Barrett, Lillian Byam, Whitfield Connor, Lou Krugman, Michael Ann Barrett, and Parley Bear. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Anthony Barrett, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gipney speaking. Next, it's the big show. All this and Tallulah 2 on NBC. Welcome back. Well, a reminder, I guess, that not all Christmas-themed episodes are necessarily happy when it comes to crime programs, particularly in the case of this series where they have to operate within the realm of cases that actually occurred with the Texas Rangers. And while they were able to find a little bit of a more cheerful story for last year, you can't do that. Those sort of cases are a little few and far between for the Texas Rangers. The scene where they had to tell the widow was one that showed how hard it is for law enforcement to deal with those sort of situations. And it also served to really provide an added motivation for them to find the killer. Not that I think they particularly needed it at this point. And this will be our last new episode of 2022. I want to thank everyone so much for listening, for your support, your encouragement, and I appreciate you letting me bring these great programs to you over the course of this year. Over the last 12 months, we've shared more than 11 million episode downloads, YouTube listens, app downloads. And I really am honored that you've chosen to listen to your old-time radio here. I want to say that we are going to have some really exciting things ahead for you in 2023. Of course, there are big things that are already announced. We'll soon finish the John Lund era of Johnny Dollar and get into the Bob Bailey serials. And in June, we will have a special Bob Bailey week to celebrate the 110th anniversary of his birth. Dragnet will also be returning to our lineup. And we'll have our 4,000th episode special soon. But there's even more that's in the works that I can't really tell you about right now. But I'm so excited for what we're going to be able to bring to you. So more to come on that. And I want to extend to all of our listeners my best wishes to you for a Merry Christmas season and a blessed New Year. And that will actually do it for today. If you want to be sure that you never miss an episode... Uh, follow or subscribe to our podcast using your favorite podcast software. Whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeart, or the Amazon Music app at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives. Tales of the Texas Rangers will return in two weeks as our entire regular lineup will be back January 2nd. Tomorrow starts a week of encore presentations from our archives that I think you'll enjoy. And if you found this particular story a bit too downbeat for Christmas, then you'll love what we have coming up tomorrow. No clip. I'm going to leave that as a Christmas surprise that you can unwrap on Christmas Day or whenever you happen to get to it. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off with wishes for a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs>